Jesus, we thank you for the name. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the word. What a powerful combination that we have. Unstoppable. Your name, the blood, and the power of your word. And we thank you that your word transforms our lives. It changes us. And we just give you thanks and we give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Well, you can be seated. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He's so faithful. Praise the Lord. How many believe he's faithful? Well, um, last time I was with you was a, uh, actually a Sunday a week ago, but we um, two weeks ago, Wednesday night, um, the Lord really put it on my heart just to talk about prayer, and we didn't get very far. We had such good utterance talking about prayer, and actually the title of what we were talking about is Praying For and Out Your 2024. I like to think about getting ahead and praying, and uh, matter of fact, uh, with you know, so much of, uh, uh, how many believe prayer is important? You know, there's a scripture over in the book of Acts. Might do us good. It's not on my notes or up here tonight. We'll get into something in just a minute. But, um, you know, in the book of Acts chapter 7 is when the church began to really flourish. I mean, Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and 3,000 people got saved. So you imagine things really begin to flourish. And, and so they would meet in homes and they would come into the temple as well. Uh, but uh, anyway, you can imagine what they began to do, and, and they had to create order, and then how you feed and take care of people, and, and so it came to a point where the disciples um, decided it was a good idea to, uh, they said in verse 2, this is Acts 6, 2, but select from among you, brethren, seven men of good reputation, full of the Spirit, everybody say, full of the Spirit, and wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. And so it says, but we, now these are the disciples, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You know, one of the most important things that a pastor has to do is pray and study to minister the word of God. Because uh, uh, one of the things that, remember, Jesus, actually, you know, several times, Jesus told Peter when he said, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep. And then he said it again the second time, feed my lambs. And then he said it again, feed my sheep. And so the feeding of, of the sheep, feeding people the word of God is one of the most, is the highest responsibility really of a pastor. And they said, so we, we will devote ourselves, everybody say devote, we'll devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So I just thought I'd help myself out a little bit. Donna's talking about me being in my office. I, I have been in my, I have been in a lot in, in my office over the last 31 and a half years that I pastored this church. And so since you saw me two weeks ago, Wednesday night, we have turned the church over to Brody, and, uh, and we had a wonderful transition service, and then uh, we were out last, during the week, had a meeting that we went to, and then we ministered in Seminole Sunday, and then with Brody having shoulder surgery, uh, so I'm filling in tonight. And so anytime Brody needs me to fill in, uh, but we always, you know, I just said all that, say we, we uh, over the years, and, and Pastor John and Nice just flew in from Honduras, and, and so you know, when you, when you have a responsibility to uh, shepherd the flock, um, to feed is to shepherd, to feed the flock, and so something else that's important that I just thought I would bring up that's for the congregation, uh, if you go to Colossians, now just jump over to Colossians, didn't plan on saying any of this, but since Donna so wonderfully, eloquently talked about how I sit in my office and, and then as, while I'm studying, I do get a few emails from things, I'm a, but I'm a fast shopper, I know what I like. <laughs> I know what I like. I do some online, you know, shopping, and, and it doesn't take me long, and it's easy, you know, so I'm guilty. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, praise the Lord. But I, but I do notice that my wife gives a lot of my money still to my kids. <laughs> it's like, you know, a Sunday after we had the transition service, she gave Brody an offer, and I said, you gave, you gave him what? <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. I notice my kids still get some money quite a bit. Anyway, but look at Colossians chapter 4, uh, verse 2. Devote yourselves to prayer. Everybody say, devote yourselves to prayer. Now, we won't take a show of hands, but how many of you are devoted to prayer? Don't, don't, nobody looking around. <laughs> so, I, I hope you are. I hope, I hope you're devoted to prayer because there's a lot of other places. You look in the early church, it says they devoted themselves to prayer and to fellowship and breaking of bread together and meeting together. And so they were, they were devoted to prayer. But he says, now watch this. Now devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. So when you pray, you always want to keep and maintain an attitude of thanksgiving because prayer is really not any good if you don't lace it with thanksgiving. 
Just lace your prayers with thanksgiving, meaning when you pray, go ahead and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because uh, remember Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, that means petition, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So uh, with, uh, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. So uh, thanksgiving is really good, gratitude before God, and believing that you receive. And so when you come to God, you ought to expect that you're going to get what, you, what you're coming for. And so you come with thanksgiving. And, and really, you don't even want to come into his presence without first thanking him about how big he is and how good he is. So come into his presence with thanksgiving, into his course with praise. That's how we kind of usually pray before we just kind of get in the word. It's not just pray. The, the worship is not just so we can sing a few of the latest songs that maybe that we hear on the radio or whatever. But we come in to offer God a, 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 an offering. You know, in the Old Testament, they gave him sacrificial offerings. And we still do that in the New Testament. We give him Tithes and offerings, and we give him our praise and our worship. It's an offering. We offer up the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, Hebrews 15. says, giving thanks and praise. So you can do that all the time. But again here, notice he says in verse 2, this is Colossians 4, 2, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it. You know, prayer is what keeps you alert. Staying spiritually sensitive to things that are going on, things that you need to be sensitive to, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Verse 3, notice it's praying at the same time for us as well. Us would be, Paul's referring to him as the minister. For us as well, that God may open up to us a door. Everybody say a door for the word. What, what kind of door would that be? That's a spiritual door. A spiritual door for the word to go forth. Notice, for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ for which I have also been imprisoned. So one of the things you have to understand about the importance of this, again, and I wasn't planning on going this direction here. We'll, we'll just throw this out here. It's important for the congregation to pray for utterance and for the spiritual door for the word to go. And that he said that I may speak forth the mystery of Christ. Now, with that being said, go back a few pages to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, praying all, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times. Say at all times. at all times. In the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert. Notice again, prayer helps you stay alert. In other words, you don't get bogged down with worldly things, and prayer keeps you, keeps you uh, sensitive, alert. Be on the alert with all perseverance and petition, and not just Paul's for the ministry here, but for all saints. So you pray for one another. You pray for your cousins. You pray for people that are lost and ask God to send laborers across their path. Don't ask people that aren't saved, God save them, God bless them. No, the best way to pray for people that are lost is say, God send laborers across their path. He's the Lord of the harvest. Remember Matthew chapter 9 says, pray ye to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. He's the Lord of the harvest. But it's important, he said, we're supposed to pray for these things. There's things that we pray for. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. Hallelujah. Thrust them out. Send them forth. So you pray for your family. You pray for lost people. Uh, that God, um, oh, the best thing you can pray for, pray for yourself is make me a blessing. Don't ask God to, don't pray for God to bless you. Oh, Lord, bless me. No, he already has. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I mean, he is blessing us. But the best way to pray is, Lord, bless me. Not bless me. Make me a blessing. Lord, make me a blessing. Don't play. My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you give me. Bless me and my four no more. No, say, Lord, uh, make me a blessing. Everybody say that. Make me a blessing. Use me. Make me a blessing. Amen. And that's a good way to pray. But he says here, notice, for all the saints, and then verse 19, watch this. And then he says, and pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth. Now, notice he says that utterance. So, you know, there's uh, what's called divine utterance. Meaning, you can, the, the minister, so, you, so as a congregation, you pray for Brody, you know, or whoever is behind the pulpit. You're praying, and you're expecting that when they get up and speak, there's divine utterance going to flow. And that they'll speak, hallelujah, things that maybe they didn't plan on saying. That, that divine, that utterance may be given to me, or, or that open door, a door of utterance. That he says here, that the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. So, you know, the goal is to speak boldly. They prayed in Acts chapter 4. Remember when they prayed, when Peter and John came back and they began to lift their voice and they said, Lord, now grant that your bondservants would speak your word with all boldness while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders would take place through the name of your son Jesus. 
So we got to ask for those things. And so really, um, that kind of fits in. So uh, it's important that you're devoted to prayer, stay alert in prayer. And you see a lot of that when Jesus talks about prayer. He talks about being alert in prayer. So you want to just stir up your prayer life. Uh, and that's just something that, you know, it, it's not just one thing. It's not just sitting down for 10 or 15 minutes in the morning. You're developing. He said praying always. And sometimes and always meaning there's different kinds of prayers. So you can pray the prayer of faith, and it don't take very long to pray the prayer of faith. It doesn't take long to stop and just say, you know what, devil? I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. You know, something's coming against you, or you feel an attack, or something all of a sudden, something comes up, and you just say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You, I mean, you know, devil, in the name of Jesus, you stop and desist in your maneuvers, right? I mean, if you understand your authority and the power that you have, it doesn't take that long. You don't have to pray all night to get the devil under your feet. Jesus already whipped the devil, and he said, I gave you authority. And so in prayer, we just go before the throne, right? Yeah. And you take authority. And then there's other times you, you're petitioning. You're, you're, you're petitioning God for things, you know, asking God. And so, um, so we're talking about prayer. But I just thought I'd just throw that out there to be devoted and pray for utterance. Pray for the pastors. Pray, amen. Pray for the leaders. Glory. I mean, that's a responsibility that we have as church members. To pray for the leaders and pray that God will give them wisdom and, and to speak with the oracles of God. I mean, there's a lot the Bible says that, you know, Paul, uh, I mean, different Isaiah talks about, Lord, that, you know, let, my, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And that I might speak a word in due season. It might bring comfort and grace to the hearer. So there's a lot of things about speaking that is, can be divine and supernatural and anointed. Hallelujah. And so it lifts up and it builds up. And that's what preaching does. Preaching, the purpose for the word is to build up and to edify. Praise the Lord. Uh, Acts 20, 32 says, And now I commend unto you the word of grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. So there's a building up when we're hearing the word. All right, enough of that. Let's go to the, so we're going to continue, because uh, I didn't get very far uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago when we took off talking about praying out and for your 2024. And it's important that you, um, you know, sometimes I have understood, I, I really felt like there's times I'm behind, meaning it's important that you can pray out, get out ahead. You can get out ahead of your life in prayer. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. But I thought we would just begin, this is Jeremiah 29, 11, because most everybody knows Jeremiah 29. 11, talking about God's plan for you. Anybody believe God has a plan for you? And uh, the NIV says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Hallelujah. So notice, uh, I like just the way the NIV re reads that, that You'll call on me and come and pray to me. So how I many know we're supposed to call on God, to pray to God, to, to look to him? Uh, and the importance is, is because he does have a plan, but God's plans don't just come automatically. We don't just go through, in other words, everything that happens in our life is not necessarily the will of God. Because we do have an enemy, and Jesus said the thief comes. So you have to know what the thief looked like, what his tactics look like. And Jesus said, but I came that you might have life and life abundantly. But you're going to have to pray for the things of God. The promises of God have to be asked for. Uh, you're going to have to contend for the things of God. That's why we have faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Remember, Jesus said for Mark eleven twenty four, 24, for all things that you pray and ask, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Well, if you had them, you wouldn't have to believe you have them. You'd already have them. So that's where faith comes in. You've got to believe according to the promises of God. This is mine. I take it now. I believe I receive it. I'm going to have this thing. And you hold fast to it. And you believe God for those things. And you believe God for the good things and the plan that he has for you. And so as you, if you, and you, if you desire the will of God and you're seeking after God, he will show you. I said he'll show you. And I mentioned, you know, we talked about uh, last time uh, the Bible uh, referring to Enoch. Enoch, back in early in Genesis, he was the seventh generation from Adam. It says he walked with God for 300 years by faith. Because Hebrews 11 tells us by faith, Enoch walked with God. 300 years and God took him. He was, he was raptured. He just took him. Well, that's a picture of the church being raptured right there. Because we're walking by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. So we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. What's that mean? We walk according to the word. What does the word say? That's how you walk. 
What does the word say? That's how you live. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm supposed to love. I'm supposed to walk in peace. I'm supposed to bear the fruit of the spirit and grow and develop. And so walking according to the word is called walking by faith, not by my circumstances, because my circumstances don't determine my joy. I already have the fruit of joy, so I just respond and say, I, I, I'm going to acknowledge, according to Philemon 6, I'm going to acknowledge every good thing which is in me in my identification with Christ. Because I'm in him, he's in me. 1 Corinthians 6, 7, 6, 17 says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And we've talked about that in that spirit, soul, and body, spirit. So you're joined to God. Everything that belongs to Jesus and all that's mine is yours. We're joined heirs with Christ Jesus. It's not, we don't get all the good stuff when we just get to heaven. We're here, to, we're here to demonstrate Jesus in this earth right now. We are his ambassador on the earth. He's the head. We're the body. So we have to walk in truth. You walk in truth and you demonstrate truth and you share and you, you carry the light. You carry the fire. You carry the anointing. You carry the, the fragrance of Christ. He says, you are a fragrance of Christ. Woo, hallelujah. We're his example. Jesus said, I'm giving you authority as the church. And we could just, I mean, just to help you real fast, the importance of prayer is understanding our authority. I mean, if you don't, if you don't get this real simple, okay, you remember Adam? Adam was given authority and dominion. He was given, he was given a lease on the earth. The, the earth and all this fullness belongs to God. But God gave Adam a lease. He, he made man in his own image. In his life, he said, I've given you dominion and authority. You rule. He said, you rule and reign. Right? But Adam decided to let, he, he turned over his, his lease, his authority to, to, at, to the devil when he sinned. Right? Then Satan tried to give it to Jesus. He said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this dominion. All, all this will be yours. But Jesus said, no, I'm not going that way. He said, you only serve God and him only. Not going that route. I got, God's got a plan and we got to go that plan. But then Jesus whipped the devil, dying on the cross, shedding his blood, redeeming us from all our sin, redeemed mankind, and restored the glory and the authority that man lost. Jesus got it all back. Read John 17. Lord, the glory that you've given me, I've given to them. And he said, the last thing he said, I'm going, i got to go. He said, but behold, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, right? And go into all the world, preach the gospel. You got this authority now. Go demonstrate it. Take my place. And I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to help you. But here's the deal. We've got to pray. And you see, the authority in prayer comes because Satan, watch this now. He's still, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says he's still the God of this world. See, even though Jesus whipped him and took it back, it still belongs to him until his lease runs out. He's still the God of this world. He, he's still, I mean, no, he's still making a mess of stuff, even in our own country. But that's how we're supposed to pray for our nation. It's the church's responsibility to pray for our nation. Pray about the, the messed up borders and pray for our, our president, even though we, you might not like him, but pray for him. And so the church's responsibility is to pray. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. But that's what Jeremiah's talking about. I'm kind of getting ahead because I'm talking about praying for, for your own plan. The plans that God has for you, you're going to have to pray them out. Amen? What's in you? And, and as you begin to seek God, and he's talking about if you seek me and, and, and find me, you'll search for me with all your heart, you're going to walk out his plan. He is going to have, he has a plan. In other words, we can pray out God's plan for our lives. So you don't want to let another year go by without tapping into God's plan for your life. Because we deviate. We go from here and there and we get off. Anybody ever got off, you know? I mean, even, even younger, I remember in college, you know, I, I knew I was called to the ministry, but I didn't know exactly what that meant, what that was. I just knew I was called. I mean, I reached a point, I, I knew I was called. 1983, I was at a college camp and, and, I, and I just redid it. I grew up in church, but, but I just wasn't real sure. I, I didn't know what discipleship was. Anybody know when you're younger, learning to, you know, just learning to study the Word and have your own relationship with God, what that meant, not just going to church and just because I went to church, but developing my walk with God, learning to walk with God and pray and grow and develop and, and being a disciple and so forth. And he, Jesus said, a real simple word for discipleship, he said in John 8, 31, if you continue in my Word, you're truly my disciples and you know the truth and the truth will set you free. But anyway, I went to a college camp rededicated my life, knew I was called, but I didn't know what that meant. And I was playing football at Texas Tech. Some of you heard the story. 
And in 1985, right in the middle of two a days, right before the season starts, I was, man, I had done real, had a good spring training camp. Man, got, had a great, during a, during a red-black game, I was, I was actually in that game, uh, our second and fourth string played the first and third string, and we killed them. I mean, we killed them. And I had a good pass down the sideline. I was, I was a running back. And so I'm running down the left hash down, caught a good sign. A guy hits me, you know. And then I scored a touchdown on that same. So I'm on channel 11. And they got an interview and everything. They interviewed me after the game. So we're going into the season, two a days, and I'm running first string pass offense. And man, I, whoo, it's all going good. And on a Saturday morning scrimmage, right during the middle of two a days, right after the scrimmage and the coaches talking to the, we're in our little groups, and the coaches running back, we're all on our knee. And all of a sudden, right in the southwest corner of Jones Stadium, man, the light bulb came on, and, and I knew that I knew that I knew that was not what I was supposed to be doing. And I got tears running down my face, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I have been sacrificing my life. I mean, I got dreams, NFL, coaching, whatever, you know. I, I, can, I can reach kids. It's a platform. God, this is, a, this is what a platform to reach kids. And, and, but it wasn't God's plan. It wasn't God's best. Everybody say best. Now, you can do some things, but we want, how many want God's best? And Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, You'll eat the good of the land. I was reading about, about Jacob and all the, when his family, when, remember when Joseph was, became king and all the family, when they came to Egypt, they got the best of the land. He said, the Pharaoh said, come, you're going to have the best of the land here in Goshen. You're going you're to have the best. I said, that's God's plan right there. The, wherever we are in, in Egypt, in the world, we should have the best of the land. Anyway, so I had to totally redirect my life. And then the next thing you know, it all worked out. You know, you just keep following God and and then one thing leads to another, and I was, got involved in youth ministry, and I was involved in a Methodist organization in college, and had, I was in a singing group, and started doing youth ministry, and man, you just, you think, well, man, I can reach kids, okay, and the next, next thing you know, you're full-time youth, and then you go to school, and come back, and God says, go to Lubbock and start a church. I said, God doesn't, Lubbock doesn't need another church, and, but anyway, but there's a whole lot to that, but I said all that to say, you, you, you want to go, prayer's going to help you go to the next level in your walk with the Lord. And you do that, that prayer helps. It's called supernaturally praying out God's plan for your life. And, and it's going to require prayer. It's going to require you seeking God, waiting on God. And we've, we've done a lot of that, you know, where we talked about waiting on the Lord and mounting up with wings like eagles where you're just spending time waiting. And you, especially when you have critical decisions in life, you want to wait on the Lord. And how does he lead us? They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14, 16 says. But then also at the same time, Colossians says, what? Let the peace of Christ rule as umpire. Follow peace. You got to find that, locate, if you don't have peace about that move or that direction, then just back up and wait on God. And that will help anybody follow after peace. God is the God of peace. He's not the author of confusion. And so you follow peace. And so, so many times, maybe I'll start moving in a direction and I just kind of lose a little, I, I, man, I just don't, and I, so I'll just back up a little bit, just back up. Sometimes you wait a minute or you just, you know, and the and Bible says trust in the, Proverbs 3, 5, everybody knows that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That's your spirit, by the way. Lean not on your own understanding, your, your soul, your mind, your will, and your mind. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Know him. That word acknowledges yada. Know him and he will direct your path. So there, he's directing us, he's leading us, he's guiding us. And so here's the thing about God's plan. God has, God has ways that will be a blessing to you and make you a blessing to others if you follow his plan. F following his plan. There's healing in his plan. There's provision in his plan. His plan is the best. And so uh, the Holy Spirit supernaturally helps us to pray in line with God's word. That's where he, the value of the Holy Spirit involved in your life. Romans 8 talks about when we don't know how to pray as we should, right? Romans 8, 26, the Holy Spirit helps us, intercedes with us. The Greek literally means he takes hold together with. So while you're praying, the Holy Spirit takes hold together with you and prays according to the will of God. Everybody say the will of God. Well, the will of God is God's best, God's plan for our lives. But again, it doesn't happen automatically. It's because we're praying, and while we're praying, we're giving God something to work with. Sometimes you're taking, you know, when, when you, something's coming and you're like, well, that, that doesn't line up with God's word. That's not God's will. And there may be a challenge involved with it, but you take authority and you rebuke it. 
You say, no, we're not taking that. That, does, that, does, that is exalting itself against the word of God, and it's not God's best. So I'm not receiving that. I'm not taking that. You say, what if God's trying to bring it to teach you something? God teaches you with good things. You're sure you'll be tested. Your faith will be tested. But the Bible says, lift up the shield of faith and resist the fiery darts of the enemy and the, and the temptations and the things that the enemy, because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So you have to learn, uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, resist the devil firm in your faith. Resisting his tactics and his tools. And, and so the, there's sometimes you got to, Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Wow. I'm not getting very far here. But, you know, that's where the, the faith will give you something to stand on. I, I'm kind of, I I'm I'm, I'm keep wanting to get to something, and I'm having a slow time getting there. But, but I think we have a fire and a power problem with saints today. A little fire and power problem. Um, Matthew 3.11, Jesus said when he baptizes you, he baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Anybody ever read that? John the Baptist said, there, you know, I baptize with water. But there's one coming after me. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire comes with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I look at some people and say, you have, they have no fire. Yeah, somebody threw a bucket of water on them or something. Where's the fire? He baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So there's an element of fire that comes with the Holy Spirit. And you got to be fired up. Paul told Timothy, stir up, fan into flame that, that gift, that stir it up, that fire on the inside of you. The Spirit. The Spirit, you know, fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So, so you know, there's something about the fire. that Fire will, you know, it'll burn stuff off of you. And sometimes it works a little harder with other people, you know. When, when you, when, you know, it's like when, I remember when I got filled with the Spirit. I was on a mission, I was on a mission trip to Haiti, Capetian Haiti. I remember getting filled with the Spirit. I came back different. Matter of fact, that was in May of 85 uh, when I was playing football. And it's interesting that in that May, after I, that, that it was August or September into that year when the Holy, Holy Spirit just all of a sudden revelation, it was like the heaven opened up and I knew that's not what I was supposed to do. It's interesting how, I was, how God was moving. But, but fire, will, fire will burn stuff off of you. Anybody ever need any something burned off of you? <laughs> you, your flesh, you know, it's like keeping your flesh on the, on the altar. That'll, that'll burn some stuff off of you. But then Acts 1.8 says, you shall, Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. But everybody say power. So, I mean, so we see some fire and we got some power. And there's, there's power in prayer. We're going to get to that. But, um, you know, there, there's something about that power. So I'll, 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 come, I'll come back to that in just a minute. But one of the things about praying and taking authority and understand if we don't pray, nothing's going to happen. God holds the church responsible for things. And if we don't pray, it doesn't happen. Again, we talked about just the harvest. God said he's, you know, Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. Well, if he's the Lord of the harvest, why didn't he send them out? Because he, 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 he won't if people don't pray. Hallelujah. And there's other, you know, just simply scriptural prayers that we pray for, things that we're called to pray for, you know, pray, get in your prayer closet and pray to your Father who sees in secret, and the one who sees in secret will reward you openly. So there's some, there's some prayer going on. Um, but here's the main thing about prayer and just praying out our 2024. Prayer, prayer lays the tracks out in front of us like the tracks of the train. While you're praying, you're laying out some things in front of you. Let me give you this verse. Uh, it just came this morning. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says, The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. Now, this God was, was telling Moses, you know, when the people go forth or when they're getting ready to go uh, possess, you know, and do certain things. God says, The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you, and he will be with you, and he will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. And one of the things the Lord was telling him, I'll go before you, I'll go behind you, and I'll be with you. And so, one of the things I've discovered, in, and I always try to spend time praying before the new year or into the new year, um, after, you know, fasting and praying. I tell you, everything, all major things that really I have got about life and direction were, came during, I was on a three-day fast, or it came after the fast. I've had the Lord talk to me many times, reveal some things to me, just supernaturally, meaning just, just sometimes a small voice on the inside. One time, he yelled at me. 
I told you about Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, three times where he said, be strong and of good courage. And I'm saying, Lord, do you want me to preach? He said, that's for you. I'm like, what? That's for you. And so, praise the Lord. I've got to get moving here. So, um, but, but there, there uh, things need to be prayed for. And we know God answers prayer. And so if you're praying about your year, you want to pray about it, Lord. Sometimes I just say the month out loud. If you've ever heard me praying, if some of you guys, we have, sometimes we have Friday morning prayer lots of times at 6. And, and I, sometimes I'll just call out the month. Okay, I'll just January, and I'll just start praying in the Spirit about January. And then I'll call out February. And then I'll call out March. Sometimes I just get hung up on one month sometimes, and I'm praying about that. And then I'll say, and I, April. And, and then sometimes I get a certain point, and I really just don't feel led to even go past that. But I'll just specifically call out those months and, and, and just maybe there's something that quickens me. And, you know, that, so I'll, I'll just pray about those, those things and, and just making ourselves available to pray out things. Now, let's just come to this before. I'm not going to get all this. So um, just think about this. Uh, Zechariah 10, 1 says, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. He's the one that brings the bright showers and so forth. So think about rain where he says, ask ye for the Lord rain. Now, now you know, they, that's a farming term. You know, you can't, we can't have a harvest without the rain. But then if we go over to James chapter 5, verse 7, there's spiritual rain because it says in James 5, 7, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer, the husband, talking about the Lord, waits for the precious produce of the soul, being patient about it until he gets the early and the late rains. Everybody say the early rains and the late rains. And so, Zechariah says, ask of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. Well, he says, the Lord waits patiently for the produce of the earth. He's talking about a harvest of, of people being saved. The early and the latter rains. You too be patient, strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord draws near. So, one of the things that we see is the book of Acts was early rain. That was early rain. And you see, you see the church, church being birthed, and you see signs, and you see wonders, and all this kind of stuff. Well... We're in the latter rain right now. But God says specifically, ask for the latter rain. I'm convinced the latter rain actually started in the early 1900 revivals. I think 1906 was the Azusa Street revival. There were Welsh revivals. There were big time revivals that started late 18, 1900s. And we've been in, we've been in the last days. Praise the Lord. The, you could say the last of the last. We're in the last of the last days. And so... Part of what we're in is we're supposed to, we have a responsibility to ask for rain. The rain of the presence of God where people get saved. They just come into a service. They sense the presence of God. And, you know, maybe you walk into your office or you go into school or wherever. And just people can just, all of a sudden, something changed. Something happened because you're carrying something. But it's the rain and the, the Bible says we're supposed to ask God for that rain. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of latter rain. Well, we're in the time of latter rain, and so we're supposed to pray. So there's one of the things that really ought to be heavy on our prayer list. And finally, one more thing here, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and I'll, I'll unhook here. Well, maybe a couple more things. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, most people know this one. God says this, and my people who are called by my name, if they'll humble themselves and pray... And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. You think that would apply to America? Yes. Well, you think if we, if we could get enough Christians praying for America, that God could heal our land? Praise the Lord. But what's the requirement? God says pray. If my people who are called by my name will. So, so he, obviously it takes a humility because we're dependent upon God. So we're saying, Lord, we need you. We need rain. We need, we need utterance. <laughs> I mean, I always pray for that. God, I thank you for divine utterance. I thank you for open doors of ministry. I'm praying for that right now in this new, in stepping out in this new direction for, for doors. And, and I believe I already got one. You know, God's already opened up one. I may be in the Philippines before, before March is over. We're working out of date. Praise the Lord. But um, so there's, there's, there's things that we pray. You, you, you need to be praying for your future. Praying over your kids, uh, you know, praying for protection at the right place at the right time, asking God for wisdom. James says, if you lack wisdom, in James 1, 5, if you lack wisdom, ask of God, parentheses, who gives liberally that reproach, close that parentheses, and it will be given to you. 
You ever notice that? It just tells you that God's a liberal, giver, generous God, uh, and he won't withhold. So if you'll ask God for wisdom, he'll give it to you. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed. Let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So if you're going to ask for wisdom, you need to go ahead and know that God gives, and, and you need to ask in faith. So if you ask in faith, how do you act when you leave your prayer time? Ooh, I'm feeling good today. Because we shared 1 John 5, 14 and 15 last time. This is the confidence that we have. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know we have the request that we've asked. So how, do you, how would you act if you had the request that you asked? Well, you, would you be depressed the rest of the day? Well, I'm just waiting on God to do something. Well, did he hear you or not? And if he heard you and you prayed according to the word, because John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. I know I'm spouting off some scriptures right here, but it's good prayer scriptures. Ask whatever you will. What does that mean? What's whatever mean? Man, I mean, because you're asking in line with the word. You got the word. You know God hears you. Praise the Lord. So if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. In other words, they're seeking God. He said, I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. That's a good thing. And I mean, I mean, I think even healing, healing the land has to do with healing lives and healing people, good things happening. So really, we can say like this, prayer is the birth and center for purpose and answers, getting direction, praying out things for your life. And the primary purpose for God's house is prayer. And this will be my last. I said the primary purpose for God's house is prayer. And everybody ought to know what Isaiah 56 verse 7 and Jesus quoted it in Mark 11. He said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Everybody say a house of prayer. But you just, man, I mean, what are we doing? Well, it's nice to have some, some, some you know, fellowship dinners and amen. <laughs> but it's, it's good to pray. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Now, Jesus quoted that in Mark eleven fifteen 15 through 17. He said, my house shall be a house of prayer for all the nations. For all the nations. You know, when Jesus cleansed the temple, it was because they were not using it, for, using it for its intended purpose. So now the body of Christ is the house of God. It's not just the building. The body of Christ, corporately and individually, we're the temple of the living God, right? Paul said, what? Don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And also corporately, he said, uh, verse 1 Corinthians 6, individually. 1 Corinthians 9, he talks about the body corporately. We make up the house of God. And so when we come together, it's important. Hallelujah. So that's a good place to stop right there. How many just want to pray a little bit before we're done? I mean, I, I, know when, I, I tried to stop right at 8 o'clock a little bit. How about we just pray a little bit for about 5, 10 minutes maybe. We'll just pray. Amen. And pray maybe some things that you're needing God to do. Things that you're wanting to see this year. Well, number one, we just thank God for rain. Hallelujah. And direction. Thank you, God, for direction for our life. You're directing. You said if we'll acknowledge you in all our ways, maybe you need a house. Maybe you need a new job. Maybe you're believing. I mean, you can get you, you can start thanking God way out there. Two, three years down the road. Maybe you're going to graduate a year or two years from now. I know one of the things that we did, and when our kids were in college, we just, we just called in the tuition ahead of time. Well, we're going to need tuition, Lord. So we would pray, thank God for the tuition. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Father, we just come before you right now. We thank you right now that you're a good God. We thank you that you hear us when we pray. Hallelujah. We just look to you. You're out of time. You're eternal. And so we thank you that you can go before us and you can go behind us. Your word tells us that you even know our needs even before we ask, but we're still supposed to ask. And James says we have not because we ask not. So Lord, we just specifically thank you, number one, we thank you tonight for our president. Lord, we pray that he would know you. We pray that he would make decisions, godly decisions, that would be in the best interest and benefit of the people of this nation. And that's so good to pray it that way. Lord, just anyone that's in any office 
whoever they might be. Lord, let them make our government, make decisions for the benefit and blessing of the people. Hallelujah. That you, even in this election year, you put the righteous in office. Lord, that the righteous be voted in office. Because you said righteousness exalts a nation. And it's so important that as a church, we're praying for our nation. Praying and, and Lord, uh, I believe even taking authority and coming against things and destructive things and people that want to do harm to our nation, that those things will be exposed and they'll be come to naught. The enemy will be found a liar and exposed. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for needs being met. You know our needs, Lord. We thank you for all, any, everyone's in any need in this building right now. Wisdom needs, financial needs, physical needs, relational needs, whatever they might be. We thank you that you're the God of an abundant supply. And you supply all of our needs. Philippians 4.19 says, God, you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you for the harvest tonight. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for Pastor Brody, that you're guiding him and directing him and as shepherd over this church and to lead the people and give him utterance and direction and vision for what you would have him to do. And we thank you for the leadership and we thank you for all the connect groups and all the connect group leaders and all the extensions and arms of ministry that flow out of this church. And we thank you for the worship team and we thank you, Lord, for the anointing, Lord, that you would just saturate this auditorium, saturate this church, Lord, with your fullness, that you would fill us with all your fullness. And, Lord, help us to be rooted and grounded in love so that we might be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge that we might be filled up with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. And that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, we would know the hope of your calling. Yes, your plan. The hope of your calling. And what is the fellowship of the inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us when we believe? And so, Lord, we believe and we speak and we release our faith in prayer, believing that you'll do these things. We thank you for, for signs and wonders. Lord, as the word is preached with boldness, Lord, we're asking you, we're contending for the glory that you will extend your hand to heal, that signs and wonders would take place through the name of your son, Jesus. As your name is magnified, Lord, that people's bodies are healed. Thank you that there's restoration, hearts are restored, healing's taking place, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah, because you're a good God. And we thank you for these things, Lord. We thank you for your direction. Lord, we just yield to your plan. Thank you for good relationships in the church that you're, that you're connecting us, Lord, with good, good people, good connections that help us on our course in life. I thank you for those that you've brought in my life in the past and those that you continue to bring, Lord, that help us. We need people that encourage us. We need people that run with us, Lord. We need good friends, because you said, he that wants to be wise walks with wise men, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. So, Lord, help us to recognize a fool. Recognize a fool real quick, and we just uh, keep moving on. Ha <laughs> ha. And we thank you, Lord, for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, that we're growing in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, and faithfulness, and self-control. We just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we worship you. Lord, help us to be worshipers. You're seeking after worshipers. Hallelujah. That worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we just look to you and we call upon your name. And you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so, Lord, we just look to you and we thank you for using us as vessels. Vessels that you can use, that you can flow through. Hallelujah. Thank you for specifics this year, Lord. Because I believe there's going to be some, some dark times, and uh, it's good for the church, but we'll have to walk by faith. And there'll be some challenging times on, in the earth and in different nations during this year, Lord. It'll be, it'll be dark. It'll be difficult in some places and different things. But, Lord, we keep our focus on you. Hallelujah. We have authority. Just like you told Peter, I've given you the keys 
of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, they'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, they'll be loosed in heaven. So, Lord, show us things that we need to bind. Show us things that we need to loose. Hallelujah. And, Lord, I loose finances for your people. We say, thank you, Lord, for ministering spirits, the angels that will go. They hearken to the voice of your word. So as we're praying and speaking forth your word, the angels will respond accordingly to your word. Hallelujah. Thank you for the nations, Lord. You're raising up people from every nation, tribe, and tongue to be a people for you. Hallelujah. Your family. Lord, help us to acknowledge you, to recognize that you have called us out of darkness and into light. We're people, we're children of light, and so we're going to walk in the light as you're in the light. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Now, if you have a prayer language, just go over, let's just slip over and pray in tongues just a minute. Paul said in Hebrews 14, I'll pray with the understanding, and then I'll pray in the Spirit, meaning just praying out of the tongues. Jude says, Beloved, building yourself up on, up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in the love of God. So, so we're just talking to God right now. So we're, corporately, this is just corporate prayer. Bantake is shamanta du and basta. And so we exalt you, Lord. We glorify you. Temate. And it's a way that you get over. You just hook up to your heart and get over in the Spirit. Lembratafi joma de viki spate. And remember Romans 8, when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit in intercedes for us, even with groanings too deep for words. See, Jesus said in John 7, 37, on that last day, the great day of the feast, he said, he called out and said, if anyone's thirsty, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit who had not yet been given. But on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was given, and it says, and the Holy Spirit fell, and like tongues of fire rested upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So right now, come on, just yield to Akadosh, if it didn't show that, it's just the heavenly language. You don't know how to, sometimes our spirit just doesn't know how to express to God. And you just hook your tongue up to your spirit. Because Proverbs, I mean, 1 Corinthians 14, 14, Paul said, When I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. So, man, that's a good way to connect with God right there. You're infinite in wisdom. You're glorious in power. You're mighty in strength. And then you can just begin to prophesy because you're connecting and you're samashe. As you magnify, Paul said, man, he that speaks in an unknown tongue gives thanks well. So that's just a good way to give thanks and praise. Sakata oline or shamantu. And pray out the plan of God. Digita vale. Oh, kazamande. You know, Lord. You know the things. Imakio no mande. You will direct us and guide us. You will the full in Ambrene. Son de de Shanovile. Thank you, Lord. Ovinja Bakadzia. On stapole ne freyan tatata. You're so full of wonder. Mata liesto. Help us to see you. And thank you for the glory of God manifested, Lord. The glory of God filling the temple, filling the church, the filling the people, filling the code shimba. With all your fullness, and we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. You are faithful. Hallelujah. You're faithful. You're faithful to watch over your word to perform it. Hallelujah. And we thank you that he who began a good work in us will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. So we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah. Come on, just give him, why don't you just stand up. Let's stand up and just thank him before we're done. Ha ha, we thank you, Lord. 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 We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it's important that, you know, we're all called to pray. Hallelujah. Prayer just simply means you just talk to God like he's your best friend. Praise the Lord. And you can talk to him throughout the day when you're in your car. Amen. And you, it, maybe you're here and you're like, man, I don't, what, I don't know about that praying in tongues or praying in the Spirit. Uh, well, I have a book out there called The Incense of Prayer. It's out here. And, uh, or we have other little mini books. So we'd be glad to uh, just give you if you're interested in uh, one's called Why Tongues. And uh, what, what's so important about it? Because uh, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 14, says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, builds himself up. 
and speaks mysteries to God. You know, when you're praying out the plan of God, the things of God, it's a mystery. Hallelujah. But mysteries prayed out bring revelation. That's how you get revelation stuff. You pray it out. And you say, well, well, I, I just heard that's for some people, not for everybody. No, it's for everybody because why would God give some people the opportunity to pray out mysteries and build themselves up, but he wouldn't give other Christians the same opportunity? No, that's just, that's just people that don't know the word. That's just called denominational stuff, and I grew up denominational, and I never, I never learned about it until I finally got in a place that was teaching. I thought, oh, that's the word. And if you're hungry, God only commits himself to the hungry. If you're hungry, you'll be satisfied. If you're hungry... You'll be filled. So, so until you get hungry, uh, you know, that you, you'll just mess out on some things. Praise the Lord. And so if there's things that aren't really, uh, if they're kind of new to you, well, just find out, is it in the Bible? Because it's true. If it's, you can find it in there. It's, and, and I can tell you, I, I will say this. Remember I shared it in Matthew 3, 11. It says, when John said, uh, there's one coming after me, he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. Uh, show me one place in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John where Jesus ever baptized anybody in Holy Spirit and fire. You won't see it. But when did he do it? When he went and he sent the Holy Spirit. Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit is still here. And God wants everybody to be filled. Hallelujah. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. That's just, it's, a, it's not that strange of a deal. There's, there's, there's Spanish, there's French, there's Chinese, there's Japanese. It, that's just a language that just comes out of your spirit. It's a heavenly language. I said it's a heavenly language. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I got it in, in Haiti in 1985. Man, I grew up Pines 57. My uncle was a Baptist youth pastor. My mom was Episcopal. My dad was Methodist. I went to a church. I went to Lubbock Christian High School, Church of Christ School. Uh, went to, was involved with the Methodist student organization. Man, I was Heinz 57, man. I, but, I'm, but, but somebody, a friend of mine started telling me about being baptized with the Spirit. And I was like, man, I already got the Holy Spirit. I'm saved. I got the Spirit. And, but he was said, yeah, but it's, it's this extra, you know, and, and uh, so, and God kind of just confirmed it with some other people. Next thing you know, didn't take long. I said, well, I'm hungry. If it, it, I saw it, in a, if God wants me to have it, I want it. And then you say that, you done, you done gone to the hill. You're sliding down now. You're in the creek. Hallelujah. Say, I'm hungry. Just say, I'm hungry, Lord. Give me all that you have for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, you glad you came tonight? Praise the Lord. Well, uh, I think Miss Donna didn't, forgot to mention her maybe, but we have chili. And uh, here's the good news. You want some good news? Free chili tonight. It's free. All the chili's free. So take two bowls, three bowls, whatever you want. Just get you some chili before you go tonight. Fellowship. Hang out. And what? Oh, and if, a few of you guys, if you would like to help us, we have, there's a big, heavy um, connection table out there we need to move if you'll help us, and then some tables that we need for the connect group. So anyway, so if a couple of you guys want to help us with that. Uh, you're dismissed. Have a blessed night, everybody, and uh, get you some chili. Praise the Lord. It's good chili, too. I had some. No.